Hello, hello. My name is Sana Mirza and I am an artist who practices Islamic art. I delve in the realms of combining Arabic calligraphy with Arabesque floral and ge geometrical patterns. And in this little workshop, we are going to delve in the realm of how to make your own little motif, more known as the Shams motif. But in this case, we're going to combine a sort of floral pattern with it. So let's delve in with the materials of what you would need and basically a pencil and some paint brushes if you're going to paint. And to compose the pattern, you're going to need a ruler and a cup and a protractor if you have, not needed, but will help and some water and some tea if you have and this can be regular tea but in this case i have made some blue tea because i want my background to be blue so first i will teach you how to create that tea wash on your background to uh, act as a base so let's delve in and basically i have a watercolor paper and I am going to take that tea I have steeped in hot water and I am just going to gently with a little sponge brush wash my watercolor paper. This is about an 11 by 11 inch paper that I have that will fit my motif perfectly. So once I've done that, I am going to put that on the side to dry and bring out my composition. In this case, the little paper and a little tracing paper of what I'm going to compose. And pretty much what you want to do is fold your paper in half. In this case, like this already done and then you want to fold it second time like this and so you've created a sort of center here like this and what you want to do first is create a little center in the middle with a cup so you're just going to align your 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 um, center like that and create a circle in the middle like this if you have a protractor that works as well but in this case I'm just going to create it with a with a cup since I'm doing geometry for dummies here and since we are in quarantine some materials we may not have so just to make it a little easier and I'm just kind of making another line here to create a base for my sun rays once I have done that I am going to make a little circle in the middle like this and what I'm going to do here is actually create half of my pattern and then do a mirroring of it on the bottom by tracing it again. And what I can do is take my paper and fold it so it is mirroring that side again and I can retrace this on the other side like this very easily to keep my lines from being very exact. Once I have done that, here I would retrace that. Once I have done that, I'm going to fold the paper like this and 
retrace the pattern on the other side, my marks with, with my already drawn marks. And pretty much what I will get is a really nice symmetrical pattern based on this mirror, easy mirroring technique that I do quite often to create symmetrical patterns. Finish your little flower arabesque pattern in the middle, very much inspired by nature itself and the snowflakes and symmetry found in all of nature. And once I've done that, I am going to actually fold my paper to create a very symmetrical one on the other side. And my lines will trace right where I want them to without having to measure anything. I trace it. And so, once I have something like this, I'm going to actually fold it again and trace it on the bottom. The same exact pattern. So in total, I've got six rays now, identical to each other, which is part of the beauty of this pattern. And so in the end, you will have a pattern like this, fully symmetrical. What you can do next is take your ruler and add little sun rays to a little light bulbs to it, extensions to create a little bit of a the effect of magnificence to your composition. And what you want to do is kind of at the circle point, make a little circle here and create little motifs on the edges like that. And you can always even add little teardrop shapes here to bring out the sun rays. And the same thing you can do here by drawing a line and creating the same effect like that. And if you want, you can just retrace it here again rather than redrawing it. And so you want to do the same thing on the bottom by folding it and making your extensions on the bottom. Like that. So that is done. So I've created a little draft, a little layout of my pattern. And what I will do next is take that tea dye paper that is dry now a little bit of a light bluish color and I'm going to place it in the center of my paper I'm going to take my tape and position it so it remains still while I'm tracing like this And what you want next is a carbon paper and you're going to face it down onto the paper and retrace your whole pattern like this. In this case, you can take, you can take any sort of um, pen that you can see that where you can see that you have traced your lines I'm using a pen here to for added pressure 
and slowly just retrace the whole pattern onto your watercolor paper. Remain in the present moment. Allow yourself to absorb the beauty of the pattern that is transferring to your paper and enjoy this process. A lot of symmetry and repetition is involved in Islamic art, which makes it all so much more beautiful. Traditionally, the sun motif is called the Shams motif, very commonly found in many illuminated ancient pieces to represent the sun within you, the light within you. In this case, I have meshed it with a floral pattern to go with it to kind of express the flower, the blooming flower, the blooming light within in a sort of abstract composition combining the flower and the sun together. As I'm doing this, my lines are actually transferring onto my watercolor paper. Like that. Look at that. In this case, I have kind of left out the the white, the, the round circle that I originally traced and just done it without to create a sort of flower. And so what I'm going to do next is basically paint this. And in this case, I am using acrylic paints. Um, you can use markers or whatever you feel you like to use in terms of coloring your motif and let your imagination and intuition allow you to choose the colors that you want this motif to express. I've watered down these paints quite a lot to create a sort of watercolor effect and have fun with this. Staying within the lines, yet expressing that passion, that blooming center, that self that has become present with the blooming flower within, become present with that flower that res resides within us, to tap into that energy and allow us to feel what it feels like to be a flower and in this case you can actually use a sort of thicker brush kind of as i'm painting i'm just trying to remember my sun essence that place within me that the light shines that makes me happy and just sort of stay in that moment of intention as I paint to allow that part of me to shine forth more and more in my outer reality as I meditate on this flower that is really always, almost always blooming from within, it's just a matter of tapping into it, which makes us aligned with it and makes us one with it, which makes art such a beautiful practice. Obviously you want to take your time with this and color it very carefully, allowing your brush to become part of your presence. Allow yourself to choose any colors you feel that express your soul. And there are so many limitless possibilities of what you can create in terms of the base motif. And just allow yourself to let your lines go where they want to go and create your own pattern with this simple technique. And the beauty is that you can create anything. It's not limited to one pattern, which is the beauty that you find in an all Islamic art is that expression of that 
limitlessness, that infinite quality of oneness that is found within all nature, yet it's so different and unique every time, from flower to flower, from pattern to pattern, yet all point to a center, the middle point to a oneness that is found in all symmetrical patterns, all leading to one in the end, which really helps to align yourself with that center when you paint such a motif, it really calms the soul and really centers us in our essence and oneness. So once I've painted that, I'm going to wash my paintbrush again and paint my center here. In this case, I am going to actually use a gold here in the middle, like that. I'm also going to take the gold and add it in the middle here as well. And you can choose a color that is contrasting if you like. I want it to kind of blend in with the orange. A nice blue would look nice or any sort of color that you feel would enhance the beauty of the flower. And just gently paint with the gold. The gold really adds a really nice richness to the painting. Very traditionally, commonly found in all Islamic illumination. Kind of adds that majestic quality to the work and brings out that gold essence within you too when you use gold. Wash my paintbrush. When you want to, what you want to do with these is kind of take your gold and any color you like. In this case, I will do gold. But another color is very commonly used for these extensions is dark blue. But in this case, I want it to match. So I'm going to keep it gold, very uniform to the actual flower. Meditate on that light within you to also extend outwards, moving it from the center of your core to outside of you in any way you can, in any beautiful way you can. And kind of meditate on that symbolism as you paint and allow your mind to wander in all that is beautiful, which is what Islamic art does, it really aligns you with what is beautiful, it makes you remember and focus on what is beautiful, which attracts that in your life as well then. And what last step I'm going to do, once it is dry, is take a sort of tracer. In this case, you can use something like this, a 0.3 or any sort of acid-free tracing pen that will not bleed and just finish it off with a little definition to add a little outline to your piece really makes a big difference in making it look really finished in the end and just kind of work your way and trace those carbon lines and so even in the middle, what I would do is add a little definition here. You can add even some details to your work like this, by like creating little seedlings. And you can do that even with the um, with the leaves as well, like that. So when you kind of trace that and you retrace, you re-outline all your carbon marks to create this nice definition. And you can kind of add these little lines in here to form some detail as well. And you can do the same thing with your teardrops as well to create that definition. You can also retrace your little outer 
forms as well to add more definition. Any sort of gold, once outlined, looks a lot more finished. It's always a good idea to outline your gold. And obviously I will go and finish it off by re-outlining everything here. Focusing on the moment, the present moment, allowing myself to release from all that is stressful and kind of move into that space of what does it feel like to become, to embody a flower? What are the characteristics of a flower and the sun that we could instill within ourselves to enhance that living quality within us that so desires to be expressed more and more as our mind learns to overcome the illusions of what is not real to tap into that beautiful aspect of our lives like a flower and there you have it a very simple sort of technique of how you can make your own mandala and floral slash shams motif and you can elaborate as much as you want and that is it i hope you enjoyed everyone bye bye